up, everybody? Welcome to a discussion with lots and lots of throat clearing. <laughs> Something like that. All right. That could work. So, it's still 90 degrees, well, 88, but whatever. It's still 90 degrees in here, and I'm still trying to record stuff for some strange reason. Actually, not so strange, the reason why I'm still trying to record stuff and why I'm doing this discussion here is because I don't want the big black and white update to be in the number one parking spot on the channel page, the, because black and white updates don't belong in that spot. So, just like last time, I'm going to upload something to send up with it, and it'll be a set. And this will be in the number one parking spot when everything gets uploaded. So why don't we talk about what's been going on, shall we? Because I mentioned, for those of you who don't want to watch the whole black and white update, I mentioned at the end that AMD CEO Lisa Su has had some, you know, she's had some updates on the Zen. That has affected my plans for Monolith. Along with the crap I'm dealing with at the 9 to 5 and other stuff, things are definitely getting affected at this point. So, here's the situation. The latest... So, here's, here's what was going on. I, like many other people, are sick and tired of waiting for the AMD Zen. We are sick of it. It's turning into the Duke Nukem Forever of processors. If it doesn't deliver on any of what it's supposed to do, it's going to be the Duke Nukem Forever of processors. People waited for far too long to end up with a product that was completely underwhelming. And I have my concerns about the Zen, and they're very well founded. So, let's see if we can talk about this, shall we? Now, here's, here's the thing. I'm sick and tired of waiting. I have contingency plans like everybody else. If I need to build an Intel system, that's what's going to happen. I'm also considering the possibility that I may start Monolith with Tuxedo's current hardware. Buy the case, basically. Start with what I currently have in a case that can handle 140 millimeter fans, have more official slots for SSDs, and change my drive structure to allow for better options for storing data on that system. So, that's something that I can do. I would like to build at least a gut system with a Windows 10 license and a case, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be feasible with how things keep getting delayed and delayed and delayed, and Intel keeps milking their near monopoly status on the high end for everything it's worth. And the problem with what's going on with Intel is that Intel's prices are setting a standard for what high end performance costs. So, the Zen, last I checked from people doing theory crafting on what the mathematical capabilities will be, they place the Zen between Haswell and Skylake, which would give AMD a competitive product versus Intel. So, as Intel's improvements are meh these days, so, I mean, you still get a Devil's Canyon processor, and it'll still do pretty well, it just won't be as power efficient as the Skylake version is. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, having a competitive product, though, opens up the question and the speculation, will AMD continue their pattern of value pricing when they have a competitive product again, or are they going to price the Zen at just below what the equivalent Skylake chip would be? And this ends the days when AMD is always significantly cheaper than Intel. They have a lot of reasons to do that. Especially, I mean, especially if a duopoly doesn't really mean that there's enough competition to, you know, to really, for consumers to really sway either company. Maybe Intel will come down a bit, but what is stopping AMD from pricing the Zen close to its Intel competition? If you get what you pay for, it, and the performance is in the ballpark with such and such Intel chip. Right now, we have a definitive hierarchy. I'm looking at upgrade solutions, which would be what on Newegg, which would be what the guts of Monolith would be: motherboard, processor, RAM. I could bring over my sound card. I could bring over my graphics card if I want to keep the GTX 760 I have. Yeah, don't I wish I had a 1060? Ha ha ha! Okay, so here's the, here's the hierarchy. AMD, this is in order by price, by the way. 16 gigs of RAM, so it would match what Tuxedo currently has, and I wouldn't lose anything. AMD, AMD. Oh, look, we went up nearly $100, from 270 to 370 Intel, Intel. 
Intel, 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 these are Xeons now, uh, for those of you who want to use server chips in a desktop, because reasons, Intel, 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 blue, 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 down to the auto notifies that are out of stock. There's a definitive hierarchy of Intel over AMD, because that's the way the performance is. AMD doesn't have anything that really plays ball with the best that Intel has to offer anymore. Core i5, maybe, if you get the right stuff, but there'll be some other gotchas as well. And that's the thing, the, these cheap chips, the things that we've come to, to know and love over the years, cheap AMD chips, almost as good as Intel for a lot less. That's been because they're not almost as good as Intel. They're a notable step below Intel in many cases. And they don't, the highest, the best AMD stuff out there doesn't really play ball of maybe anything more than Core i5. That's been that way for pretty much the whole time AMD's had these construction equipment processors. If that changes, do the prices change as well? That's my question. And that's my concern. Another concern I have is again with this waiting game, where again and again and again, it's worth it to wait, 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 wait! I now have a reason to wait to get a Polaris card and stick with my 760. So Polaris was not priced in the ballpark of the GTX 1070, which was originally supposed to be the budget option for the GTX 10s. Now there's going to be a 1060 to play ball with Polaris. Uh, speaking of GTX cards, uh, GeForce cards, it appears that the ridiculous pricing of the so-called budget 380 graphics card being around 450 is due to a supply shortage. Oh, cool! A supply chain hiccup! Ain't that something? So the $380 card is now going to be stuck at $450, and is anything going to bring that price down unless the stuff gets superseded? I mean, what kind of consumer pressure is there for those prices to ever come down until something's out to replace it? This is something... This is something that all these armchair, armchair economists on the internet complaining about everything don't talk about when they talk about supply and demand. Supply and demand is a thing because of the underlying concept of market elasticity. So, if someone in a market ticks you off, consumer, what options do you have of sticking it to their profit saying, I'm not buying your stuff anymore, see ya! What options do you have? The more elastic the market, the more options you do have. Inelastic markets, <laughs> that's what you're stuck with. You're going to like it, learn to live with it, whatever. So commonly, oil products and gasoline are often cited as inelastic markets. Because what other options do you have if all the gas stations are at what dollars a gallon? The minute anyone prices their gas down, everybody has to come down, they lose all their business. Something like that. But, or just a you know, lack of competition in general. Like, I was just looking at, and I was making fun of on Twitter, a letter that Verizon sent someone who's using too much data on their smartphone, and they offered, I think, several hundred dollars a month for a hundred gigs. Let me give you a clue. The bandwidth cap on AT&T DSL, dinosaur subscriber line, yay, three megs down, woo! -hoo! Six megs if you're lucky, and not half the and half the town isn't watching Netflix. <laughs> but <laughs> AT and T DSL, the bandwidth cap was 150 gigs a month versus hundreds of dollars a month for 100. <laughs> well played, Verizon. That's a nice example of why there's not enough competition in the broadband industry. <sighs> okay, back to this stuff. I hope that you understand my concerns about the AMD Z, because we've waited long enough, and by the way, speaking of waiting, I mentioned earlier Polaris, da da da, apparently the Zen APU, from what I've been reading lately, is supposed to have a Polaris chip in it for the graphics, so integrated Polaris graphics. So as if the wattage fiasco wasn't wonky enough in terms of whether or not I should get a Polaris card, now I have to consider if I end up with a Zen, I'm going to get a Polaris in the integrated graphics. Why buy a separate Polaris card? Well, it's still months off. Maybe I could just get some benefit now. Here's the thing. AMD priced the Polaris low 
and ticked off Wall Street, by the way. Their stock up like that. People were not happy with those prices. But uh, because the, the performance, of course, is not in league with current NVIDIA cards, unless it's certain games on DirectX 12 on some kind of jump-through-hoops situation. Overall, Polaris is not in the same ballpark as the GTX cards. I don't even. I think even the 1060 might still do better and justify its somewhat higher MSRP, like 250 or something like that. But AMD knew they were releasing a different product to a different audience. So is that going to happen? That's not going to happen with the Zen. The Zen, if it is between Haswell and Skylake, is right in line with where it needs to be performance-wise. Intel may be launching Kaby Lake by then, or Canon, oh, Canon Lake I think got delayed. AM, Intel's going to be launching a new, did I say Intel Acid? No. AMD's going to launch Canon Lake. <laughs> no, AMD, it, it, <laughs> this heat is messing me up, man. Intel is launching the successor to Skylake around the time the Zen is supposed to hit the market, but I don't think the performance of the... People are already complaining about little improvements in the chips. So, and there are still Devil's Canyon chips and Haswell chips available out there, if you don't mind a motherboard with DDR3. So, it's... The old stuff is not being superseded very well. It's just still floating around out there. Then again, AMD still has Zambezi processors out there. They're really cheap, but they're really outdated at this point. But people still buy them. Whatever. But that's the kicker with this, this whole thing. So, yeah, Polaris. Step below what NVIDIA has on the table. Okay, lower price to go with it. What about the Zen? I'm not so sure that will happen with the Zen. What's the Zen going to be priced at? Is AMD going to price up from their prices at the next chip, like the excavator chip? Are they going to stay, in, stay true to being less expensive than Intel? Or is Intel's dominance of the market, said getting people used to spending this much money for a certain level of performance, is that go, has that become a de facto standard to where AMD can now put the Zen just below that and make some money off the chip? Especially when they know there will be demand for it, because people have been looking forward to this thing, borderline waiting too long for it. So that's my concern with the Zen. So how does this affect the monolith dilemma? Well, we got some other stuff out there. Put links in the description about the latest on the Zen, including the engineering samples. The quad-core processor, 65 watts. The 8-core will be around 95. That's both. Those are both better than my 125-watt Phenom 2. So... I'm doing like Intel here. I'm comparing what they have out to a five-year-old system. Well, that's what I have. <laughs> I, I never expected this system to last this long, and now I'm flirting with the idea of just taking the motherboard out, reapplying some new thermal grease for the third-party cooler, and then moving it into the, into the new system's case. But the thing is, after I upgrade the motherboard, the parts are going to go back into Tuxedo anyways. So it, 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 that counterbalances that idea of just taking my existing hardware and moving it forward because there's, not, there's nothing out there guts-wise that's really got my interest in terms of upgrades. Maybe a Devil's Canyon system if I want DDR3, which could mean I could take the RAM from... But the problem is none of these combo packs have for the Devil's Canyon actually, have, actually don't have any RAM in them. So I'd have to do my own thing and see if there's any discount whatsoever. So, and even then, the Devil's Canyon, I mean, even then, the Devil's Canyon is in the ballpark of what's there today, but <sighs> what about the other stuff? I'm big on performance per watt. What about motherboard features? What about things that have come out since the Skylake launched? What about other... It's, it's just a mess. It's a mess. There's nothing that really jumps out at me, therefore I don't buy anything. Because one of the big problems I have, also, incremental purchasing. You don't want to do that either. For example, if there's a $100 part, but the $200 part does what you want, you want to get the $200 part. Because if you spend $100 on the $100 part that doesn't do everything you want it to do, it's going to be gnawing away at the back of your mind until you cave from your cognitive dissonance and buy the $200 part. Raise money, get another job, whatever it takes. And by then, you've spent $300 on that $200 part, and you've got to find something to do with the $100 part. So, no. You always want to get what you want. 
What does what you need it to do? Don't try to incrementally get up to something because you're going to wind up with a lot of extra stuff that you spent money on that you really shouldn't have. So, it's very hard, very hard, to justify taking the kind of giant leap that I want to take with Monolith. Very hard to justify it with stuff out there that just... I keep asking, no, there's, there's this catch, there's this other issue, there's this, that, or the other, blobbity, blobbity, blobbity. It's... It's not like before. When I built Tuxedo, the Phenom 2 was playing hardball with the Core i7s of its day, not beating them, but in the same ballpark for notably less. And it was the best AMD processor out there. Fast forward to today, if I buy an 8350, it's only marginally better than the 1090T that I've had for years. So, that's the reason why we want to see Zen. And if we don't see Zen, maybe even a Devil's Canyon system would work. Haswell generation, for Pete's sake. What's the story with this? <sighs> However, I have, for price skimming reasons, often not bought the best stuff that's out there. Very rarely do I actually buy with the best of anything. Because I know there's a ton of price skimming to make lots of money off of those people with money to burn that always want the latest and greatest. Because reasons. They may not need the latest and greatest, or even be able to use the latest and greatest properly, but they gotta have it! So, that's the mess that I face. What am I gonna do? My case, as much as people like the Silver Bullets version of it, is obsolete. I can't get good cooling in the front, because it's only an 80mm thing in the front, versus 140 on the fractal cases I want to get. I'm having cooling problems in the summer because there isn't a way to take stuff in through the front. The case I have has better cooling coming in the side than it would in the front. The problem with side cooling is that the fins on a heat sink for video cards and stuff go this way. So it's better with front back instead of any side fins. The only reason side fans were a thing at all, ever, Intel TAC. The Intel TAC specification for those super hot Pentium 4s ten years ago. That, it's actually part of the, it's, it was an addendum to the ATX specification back in those days. Go digging for it. The Intel TAC, thermally advanced chassis, because the processors in those days were hot. So the idea of direct air blowing straight into the chip was really appealing when you had really hot processors back then. So that's the only reason side vents were ever a thing. Today, it's mm, physics kind of doesn't really play ball with you very well. You could theoretically, well, no, the, the video, the graphics cards, fins would go front back. So, what, you're gonna, if you had a hose going to your processor. <laughs> so, yeah, with the announcement of the limited quantities for Q4 and widespread availability in 2017, this is turning the Monolith project into an upgrade project of sorts. I think I might want to look into one step at a time. Graphics card, maybe pick up the case ahead of time and consider moving what I currently have for guts into the system. Or buy things a little at a time so I'm not taking this big hit and stuff. And then there's the holiday season to consider, when electronics traditionally sell in high enough volumes to bring the prices down notably. That's the best time of the year for electronic gizmos, is the holiday humbug season. So, should I wait until after Thanksgiving for all of this and see what the Zen is at? The only thing I can say for certain is I'm curious about a Zen APU laptop as a console replacement. So the odds are Unless the turd Sheba bites the big one or dies or croaks or whatever. Here I go again with those Ferris Bueller references. I'm thinking like, uh, that's the sister lady. Uh, no, Katie was the mom. Who is the sister? Not Tiffany. Yeah. Her friends called her Shauna. <laughs> but, uh, Ferris's sister saying, bite the big one, Junior. Bought the farm? I don't know. This heat is messing with me, man. But so's this crap going on with the AMD Zen. AMD, enough is enough is enough is enough is enough. There's people building Intel systems because they're sick of waiting. And I'm thinking of becoming one of them. 
if Intel has a sale on Devil's Canyon stuff, well, I have done more browser shopping in the last year or two than probably ever before, and it looks like that's going to continue for this foreseeable future. I love this waiting game. It's like a never-ending Sega 32X with the Saturn coming out, or Saturn with the Dreamcast coming out. It reminds, uh, it reminds me of Sega consoles in the 90s, before the Dreamcast was Sega's swan song from the hardware market. And I'm talking about building a computer in 2016 like that. That's the cesspool that we've sunk into, folks. Time for me to retire to an air-conditioned bedroom with Newegg on my bedroom TV laptop thingy and look at Devil's Canyon combos. See if there's a sale somehow. I can't get a combo because I already have RAM. If it's DDR3, I got plenty of RAM. I got my old 8 gigs from Tuxedo that can go back into Tuxedo. Enough of the random stuff. The monolith dilemma continues, hopefully not for much longer. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by! <laughs> Was that a veiled way of saying click like? Whatever. Multimedia J, out.